Hello, I'm Angela Sheedy. I'm your unit coordinator for NUR 329, semester 2, 2018. What we're going to do in this YouTube is give you a brief overview of what you need to know to successfully complete assessment two in this unit. So for assessment two, you have two options. One, to do the public health promotion project plan, which is the written essay submission, and that's what I'll be outlining today. Or you can actually apply to attend the public health um, public health study tour, okay, or we are called it here, Public Health Promotion In-Country Project. And that's with the Australian Consortium for In-Country Indonesian Studies, or ACHES. It's a two-week study tour over to Jakarta, Indonesia. Now, that does have an application due date, and you would have seen lots of information about this in the unit and in the announcements of the, the unit as well. So if you are interested in attending that tour, make sure you get in contact with me as soon as possible. Okay, so in this assessment we are getting you to design a health promotion project for the Australian community. This is a really important area for you to develop skills and knowledge about as a nurse. And as we've written here about why is this actually relevant for you, well as you progress through your nursing career you're going to identify areas where more education or health promotion is required to change behaviour. So this assignment is designed to provide you with the knowledge of the skills and the processes that we might use in preparing health education or health promotion resources. Importantly, it encourages you to identify that any form of health education or promotion should be designed to meet the needs of the target group and involve some form of community consultation to ascertain the need and acceptance of the health promotion. Alright, so let's find out a little bit more about assignment 2. So what we want you to do is go back to the 2016 Australia's Health Tracker Report and this is the same document that you were using for assessment one in this unit. So you would have already been familiar with one of the risk factors um, and a specific age group or, or males or, or young people that you would have explored in that first assessment. So what we recommend is that you follow the same area in this assessment as what you did in assessment one. So choose a risk factor identified in that report, either on adults or on children on the pages that we've identified. What you then need to do is prepare a detailed and innovative health promotion project plan for your chosen risk factor and your target group which is existing in an Australian community. And this can be Indigenous or non-Indigenous focused, okay, it's up to you. It needs to be an innovative idea, okay? So not reuse from a current or past um, health promotion project. So we don't want to see um, skip rope for heart health and things like this that the Heart Foundation have done. We want you to come up with your own idea for this. And the way to make it a little bit more innovative is by making sure you focus on a specific target group because that's what will make yours a little bit different. Now we've prepared eight assessment criteria and I'm going to go through each of these step by step, okay? And uh, the target group is one of the first ones we're going to address there. Now we've said the health promotion project plan should be in the form of one of the following. It should be an education on risk factor awareness or risk factor prevention, or it might be a risk factor health management, okay? Such as how you manage hypertension better. So two slightly different areas there that you can decide which one your health promotion might fall into. Okay, so now I'm going to go through each of those eight criteria and the first one is a description of your specific target group and community. And we do want you to be really, really specific about this, okay? So not just the general population of Australia, we want you to think about maybe a community area that you're familiar with. You might have children at school, things like this, okay? And that um, will make it a lot easier for you to actually meet your, the whole criteria of the assessment if you're focusing on a group that you might have a little bit of be a bit more, bit more familiar with. Um, you might choose to do um, Indigenous people in a remote community and you might actually be quite familiar with that group because you've done a lot of research and study with them um, in other units and that as well and that's fine. But when we say specific target group and community we do want you then to outline in your assessment for example that your group is going to be children aged 5 to 11 years old who are not meeting physical activity requirements and they're situated in Palmerston Primary School. And that gives you a really, really nice target group to focus on. 
Okay, and that means when you go through and you develop your health promotion project, you've got a really clear idea of who it is that you're designing this for and how you're going to get the messages through to that group, okay? Because that group would be a really different, have different needs and different health literacy levels, for example, to a different group such as adult males, um, Indigenous and non-Indigenous who were obese, aged over 50 years above in Bendigo. Okay, or you might have a, a target group that is nursing students at Charles Darwin University. So you do need to give us those specific details about your target group. Then you have to tell us why is your public health promotion going to be beneficial for your target group? What are they going to, what are they going to get out of this? Okay, what's going to improve health for them? Um, you need to go back maybe to assignment one and have a little look at some of the information that you found out there and present this to us. And so this is where you need to do a little bit of background research as to um, why this target group is going to be um, better off for having been part of your health promotion. You do need to provide a nice outline of what your goals or aims are going to be for health promotion. So this is what you're hoping to achieve, okay? And we do recommend that you go to the Smart Monomic and um, there's a nice outline of exactly what that is on page 215 of your set text as well. And I've just put a little outline here for you, which is really that we want to make sure that your goals are specific, measurable, achievable, achievable, relevant and time bound, okay? So keep that in mind with each of your goals and aims as you set them up. You should have between three to five okay goals for your project and these should really encompass the full project of what you're hoping to achieve. So you might have a goal that um, is related to your overall aim of, of reducing um, or increasing physical activity with school-aged children at this you know at um, whatever primary school and so forth. Your second goal might be then something more related to how you're going to work with stakeholders to achieve that. Um, you might have another goal on how um, that will focus around the particular activity and health promotion that you're going to be delivering. Um, and you might have one that, that's also uh, focused on how you might evaluate. Okay, so really think about, because when we have a look at your project goals and aims, it should give us a really clear indication of exactly what it is you're going to be. Of you going to be doing. Okay, the next thing I want you to do is identify which of the public health promotion management perspectives this falls into and briefly outline why it falls into this category. I'm not going to go into this too much because you covered this quite a lot in the unit, okay, and it is really nicely outlined in your set text as well on page 316. Okay, but basically we do have these health promotion management perspectives and they're segregated into a primary, secondary or tertiary area. So what you need to do is think about your health promotion um, and your target group, okay, and whereabouts they fit in either. Is it a primary focus or is it a secondary focus area? Um, it might fit into more than one of those as well. You just have to outline why. Okay, so who are your stakeholders for the project and what community consultation is going to take place? It is really important that you think about meeting with some of your target group and so forth and finding out really what their needs are um, so you understand who you're basically doing this for. Okay, so that's community consultation. Do a little bit of background research. If you Google community consultation in health promotion, you are going to come up with all sorts of articles, okay? Um, and all sorts of government sites pointing you in the right direction. So your stakeholders, who is going to contribute to your project, okay? Now don't go overboard because you know you could list like 20 stakeholders. Be realistic about what it is you're doing in your health promotion and who are those agencies that you might be able to tap into to help you, um, that might be helping you in provision of some resources for, for example or because they are experts in that particular area. But who are the stakeholders that you might need to include as well? If you're going to work for, um, do a health promotion in a school, for example, then you might be thinking you need to contact, obviously, the school, the teachers, the principal, you might need to contact the education department. And what about the parents, okay? Um, so really kind of give an idea of like, as you get your project together, 
who is who's going to need to be involved when you outline this in your um, in your assignment make sure you provide just a brief outline of, of why you've included those stakeholders okay so don't just give us a list of who's going to be there and what tell us what they're going to be doing and, and why they've been included Okay, so we have also asked that you include a specific and original health message or logo as part of your health promotion. Um, for example, we've seen some out there such as your smoking harms others, or if you can play, you can play, which is all about um, the fact that it doesn't matter what gender or what sexual orientation you have or anything. If you can play sports, you can play sports. Okay, so make sure it be appropriate for your target group. So again, you need to think about things such as um, health literacy and just literacy levels in general when you're putting these together and making sure you do something that your target group would be able to relate to, that they would understand. Okay, and just um, so present this as part of your project. When you go on to do assessment three, which is your pictorial, your health message or logo should also then be represented there. Okay, so this is a really um, vital part of your health promotion. What is it that you're going to do? <laughs> okay, um, you need to tell us what your activity is going to entail and how you're going to promote this to the target group. Now, activities can vary, okay? You might do something like, um, think about, we've, we've seen Breast Cancer's Mother's Day Classic Fun Run, for example. Um, but you also see simple health promotions that are just advertisements on buses, okay? And posters and so forth. We see YouTubes, we see ads on television, we might hear something on the radio. So have a little think about what it is that you want to educate your target group about and how are you going to get that message out to them? What sort of medium is going to work for you? Okay, is it going to be a newspaper article, a sports event, a school visit? Are you going to do some group work, an education session? Okay, what's going to work for your target audience? This is important. Now, you don't need to outline if you were going to do an education session, for example. We don't need to see every infinite detail that you would include in that education session. What you do need to include, though, is a, a brief overview of what your main focus and content area would be. Okay, because that's important for us to review to see, are you actually going to be able to get that message through to your target group? Are you being realistic about what it is that you're trying to um, educate them about and with? Okay, so the last part, last criteria of this is how you would evaluate the success of your health promotion. And this is a really important step um, for any health promotion or education activity. So you need to do a little bit of background research to find out different evaluation methods and how this has been done in the past, okay? Um, and then put forward how you might go about evaluating the success of yours. Now you don't have to make up statistics and data, you don't actually have to do this whole health promotion, remember, this is for educational purposes only. So you might sort of find out a few different methodologies and say, in this health promotion, um, evaluation will take place by an outlining. Are you going to do a survey of of um, respondents? Um, are you going to measure participation in an activity? It can be actually quite hard to evaluate some health promotion projects, so you will need to think pretty hard about it. We have provided some resources, however, in the unit to help point you in the right direction with this. And we have even got some interviews with people out in the, the primary healthcare sector who actually do health promotions and they're telling us a little bit about how they evaluate their projects. So you can also have a look at those. As we said in assignment one, this is not medical surgical nursing, it's health promotion and it's aimed at a community level. So you don't need to go into the pathophysiology of disease processes and risk factors and so forth, okay? That's not relevant at this point. However, if your health promotion was involving health workers and so forth, and that was core content of what your, your health promotion or education is about, obviously you would include it. Um, any health statistics and that that you might use for this assignment as well can be based on the overall Australian population. So you might not be able to find data for a specific suburb or target group, for example. So don't waste time trying to do that. If you're looking at um, how smoking affects um, teenagers, you might find some statistics for that. But if you're looking at it for teenagers in Bendigo, you probably won't. 
Okay, so using uh, health data and statistics for the Australian population is fine. Okay, so preparation. Well, obviously you need to work through your study materials and go through topic one to six, okay? That covers pretty much all you'll need to know to get started in this particular assessment item. And have a look at the collaborates. Hopefully you've been getting involved in them anyway throughout the semester, and they are all recorded, so you can go back and have a listen to them. But we do talk about different aspects of how you can meet this um, assessment criteria as well. Have a look at some of the YouTubes on the NUR329 YouTube channel. Make sure you refer to your set text, particularly Introduction to Public Health. That's got some really good chapters in it on evaluating health promotion projects and developing health promotion projects. Have a look at the NUR329 Library Guide. We've already pre-populated that with some references and resources that uh, you'll find helpful. And of course, if you really get stuck, please contact me so I can help you get on the right direction. Okay, make this a successful assignment for you. Right, we have prepared a template for you to use for presentation for this assessment, but it is optional, okay? You might just prefer to write this as a standard essay, and that's fine. Um, or you might have your own presentation style that you want to use, that's fine too. Just make sure you adhere to your standard academic writing, all right? So we want an introduction, we want paragraphs, we want a conclusion so we know when it's finished. Um, if you're not sure what we mean by this, have a look at uh, on the CDU website on the academic language and learning support program they have lots of good resources on academic writing headings are obviously are okay to use um, use 11 12 font either calibri or Arial is fine but always make sure that you include a footer with your student name and number on it reference list at the end of the document apa style of course i've said around seven to ten references and this needs to include some research articles your references, I remember, they're really important. They validate your information. And, and that reference list means that if I'm reading or your marker's reading something really interesting that you found, the reference list gives that opportunity for us to go and, and pull that article out and have a look at it for ourselves. And always use third person, okay, in this assignment. So no I's or me's. Uh, we want you to write this as if it's something that you'd intend to do. So this health promotion aims to... Okay, so you need to submit via the Safe Assignment link provided in LearnLine in the, in the Assessment tab area. There is a draft submission for you. Make sure you use this and to check that you've adequately paraphrased all your information and that there is no evidence of plagiarism in your assignment. Word documents only to be submitted. No PDF files or zip files or anything like that, please. Okay, just a quick overview of the marking rubric. For this assignment. Have a look where the core amount of your marks are sitting and it's obviously in this first criteria where we're looking at your demonstrating sound interpretation and addressment of the project criteria one to eight with consideration of the target group's involvement. Okay make sure you aim high look at that column that goes up to 40 and 50 all right and read through that so you get an idea of what it is that we are looking for when we're marking. We have included a separate part on the marking rubric about your health message or logo. Okay, so that's just got a separate five marks that sits for it as well. So don't miss out on those five marks. Make sure you're included in your assignment and make sure you have a good think about what it is um, that you can develop in this area for your target group. The third part of the rubric and where the other bulk of your marks are sitting is evidence of researching and using the literature effectively. So this is all about you going and doing that background research to support your health promotion project. And you've got the evidence there to show us that you've not just come up with this great idea, that you've actually thought a little bit about it and done a bit of background research as to how this is best going to work for your target group. So you've had a look at different evaluation methods. You've had a look at why we include stakeholders. And you've got that all listed very nicely for us in your reference list, but it's used appropriately and, and it's used well throughout your assignment. The last two areas on the marking rubric are for your actual referencing and your written expression, structure, sequencing and flow of information. This accumulates to 20% 20, 20 of the overall mark, okay, 10% for your referencing and that really is just specifically on your actual referencing style and presentation, okay, that you are following APA guides so don't uh, risk losing marks. Make sure you get a copy of that APA guide and keep it next to you when you're doing your academic work. 
and with your written expression and structure and so forth. If you can, get someone to proofread your work. That always helps. It doesn't matter if they're not a nurse. They'll be able to tell you if your sentence structure is good, if your information's flowing around nicely. Okay, I think that's enough of me talking about the assignment and time for you to go and get started in it. So as I've previously mentioned, if you've got any problems with uh, choosing a topic or, or knowing that you're on the right track, make sure you talk to us and communicate with us. We'd rather make sure you're in the right direction and that this is a successful assignment submission for you. You also need to be thinking ahead to assignment three as that absolutely links in with this assessment too. Okay, your assignment three is that pictorial representation of what it is that you've just finished in assignment two. Okay, so you should, once you finish this, move straight on to that. Okay, um, most importantly as well, if you have completed the incentive activities in the unit, you will have an extension for this assignment as well. You'll be able to see that in your grade center. If you've got a mark of one, in your grade center and a comment from me then you know that I have reviewed your submission for that incentive activity and that that extension will be recorded. Okay well I hope you enjoy this assessment make sure you keep a copy of it this is evidence that you know how to complete health promotion projects and health education resources. Okay put it in your professional portfolio. All right good luck with it.